Okay, hey, welcome everybody. Dylan Borland here. Hopefully everybody's doing well and you guys are having much success so far this year. I wanted to just stop and take a moment and shoot a very quick screenshot and tutorial um, while I'm in the moment. So um, one of our fix and flip properties we're working on, um, we had a, uh, we have some repairs that have to be done as a result of the inspection. Um, and so I just do what we normally do and I take the contractor's quotes and then if it's kind of not within our budget or where we want to be, we break it down and suggest other prices. Um, and a thought came to mind that this might be very helpful to some people because a lot of people struggle with, you know, knowing their numbers. You guys hear me talk about the Ultimate Real Estate Investing Course all the time. You've got to know your numbers, not only, you know, your renovation numbers, not only the, what will the house sell for, what are you going to make on the property and those numbers, but your renovation numbers. Uh, it's critical. And, um, you know, it can make or break a deal. And so you've got to be prepared. And I use this same process, whether it's a $1,200 quote for a couple repairs, like we're going to go through here, or it's a big fix and flip. And so if you guys are fix and flipping properties, it's the same concept, right? And this is exactly how you know your numbers. And on a fix and flip, it's just a much larger scale. And I'll show you guys how we kind of work through this on a small scale. And then how I don't want to make this a 40-minute video. That's not what this is about. But this is just a quick thing that you can apply to what you're doing. So we have um, a property, like I said, that's under contract. It's closing. FHA came back with some repairs that needed to be done, which we suspected. And then um, the buyer, we agreed to do a few, few repairs for the buyer as well, too, on the property. Um, the property is being sold as is, where is. And so we had one of our contractors over and give us a quote. I always recommend if you don't have relationships with a contractor, or even if you do, to go out and get at least two to three quotes, minimum three quotes, and see what they all come back with. Uh, because sometimes even contractors have been with you for a long time, don't come back with a favorable quote, and it's not their fault. They've got a business to run too, and it's got to make sense for everybody involved. And so we had a few repairs, as you guys can see, on this property listed here. And the pointer, the mouse doesn't work on this um, screen capture for some reason. But you guys can see it here. We had some repairs that came back. And these were the original quotes that were submitted to us by the contractors for the line items that need to be done. And so I just took these quotes. And it looks like they include labor and material. And I just took these quotes and I, and I brought them over to a Google Sheet to make them a little bit digestible. And I'll write down, and remind you, I do this with a fix and flip, and I'll show you guys briefly how I do that in a moment and how can, you can apply it there as well. But I wrote down just briefly all the line items that need to be done. I wrote down the current contractor's you know, quotes for those items and then the total. So there are two quotes. So this is the total for quote one, uh, which you guys can see. Um, the number is actually different than the number here on this quote, which is 134, but the numbers add up to uh, 1029. I don't know if I copied everything over correctly. 55, 27, 50, 55, 55. Oh, okay, so it's rounding up on uh, Google here. Anyways, that's insignificant. So I just copy those numbers over here, and then for their second quote as well, for 430, you guys see I copied the numbers over here as well. And so their total is fourteen hundred bucks, which is a little bit more than we wanted to spend. We, our budget, you know, and every dollar counts. And if you multiply this on a fix and flip, it's like, you know, on a fix and flip, you might get quotes at twenty five thousand, and you need to be at twenty thousand, right? So every little thing helps. So it, it it all adds up in the end, okay? But our budget on this was about a thousand bucks. That's where we wanted to be to do this work. And so I think to myself, okay, fourteen, fifteen hundred bucks is not a bad price. Most people would just cut a check for it. But I like to break it down. I said, can we do a little bit better? And this is how I break it down. So I think to myself, um, and you know what? This would be good. Let me see if I can pull up some pictures for you guys here real quick um, as well. Maybe, maybe not. No promises here. Uh, yes, I can. So I think to myself, for example, let me drag this over here to the screen. There we go. And let me go back to this. Okay, so with line item one, upstairs bedroom needs to be scraped and paint. A little bit, so FHA usually has a problem with peeling paint because, I don't know, it's just one of the conditions you can't have peeling paint. So one of the FHA repairs that came back was, uh, and this was not a renovated property, this is a property we cleaned up and sold as is. 
And one of the repairs that came back, if I can find the image here, was peeling paint above the door. And so this is how you work through it. So you guys see that there? Do you see this peeling paint above the door? So we're talking literally, you know, a, 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 you could dip your finger in some white paint and spread it across that and, you know, fix it. And so the contractor came back with a quote of $55. And so I created, a, I always create an adjustment column here and I say to myself, how long would this take a contractor and what do you pay your contractor? You know, most of our contractors, we pay between 30 to $50 an hour if they're working by themselves. If they have a crew, it could be $60 to $75 an hour for general contracting labor. If it's specialty labor like electrical or mechanical, you might pay anywhere from $75 to $100 an hour. And so you just got to figure that out. And so I'll say to myself, okay, how long could you literally spend on fixing this little paint issue here? like three minutes, right? And so I break it down, I give them benefit and say it's gonna take 10 minutes. And so I just adjust the price and say, okay, 10 minutes, a couple bucks in labor and material, you might make 20 bucks on it, right? And you're only working 10 minutes. So I just adjust the price there. Smoke detector in the basement. Sometimes I think the contractors are low and I'll say, hey, listen, you gotta come up, listen. Smoke detectors are gonna cost you, you know, 10 bucks and, and throw them 20 bucks to go ahead and, and put it in. Right? It'll take you literally 10 minutes to put it in, but what I'm doing here is I'm paying a little bit more on some things and having them come down on some others, which you'll see. So if you were to adjust this at the per hourly rate, it's going to be pretty low. But you know nobody's going to do it for $5. Okay? So you've got to take a little and give a little as well. Exposed wiring on the backs of the house. Well, this is super, super simple. I don't know if you guys will be able to see in the photos here. Um, but the exposed wiring in the back side of the house was an old air conditioner that was removed and the wirings were less. So they quite literally just need to be snipped, pulled out, and capped. Um, yeah, there's not even a picture of it. Um, so, uh, so we agreed to do that. They were charging 55 Say, listen, 45 You're just cutting some wires. Give you the benefit of the doubt. It takes you, you know, 30 to 45 minutes to do something like that and then cap it, okay? Materials are gonna be next to nothing. Uh, brick tuck point. Tuck pointing is repairing, you guys will see in a photo here, brick tuck point above window on the north side of the house. Well, that's this issue here. You guys see this window on the top? So if I zoom in, you'll be able to see this little bit, you know, FHA likes to have this filled in. See, tuck pointing is all this mortar in between these bricks. And so they just want this little tiny bit filled in here. Well, you know, they sell tubes of, of mortar already made. You just squeeze in and run a nice line across. So we think to ourselves, how long could that possibly take an experienced contractor, right? And they're charging $215 for it. So I said, listen, this should take 30 to 60 minutes. Really, it should take five. So I'm super, super padded there. Um, and then, you know, it's one line of tuck point, it should cost 10 to 15 bucks. So throw in a little extra, you figure they spend 10 to 15 bucks on materials and we and make 75 for 10 minutes worth of work. And so I adjusted that price there. Now replace 22 shingles on the back side of the roof that blew off. So, you know, 500 is not a bad price to do that, but then what I do, and I go back, I don't know, I don't know what a box of shingles cost, but most, most of the time you're gonna buy them from your Home Depot or Lowe's, so I'll go to Home Depot's or Lowe's and I'll put in, you know, roof shingle, right? Roof shingles. And you guys can see here, this is what I do. If I don't know a price of something, I'll go and Google it. And I like to buy things from home, home, uh, Lowe's or Home Depot's a lot of times in, in most of our cookie cutter houses because they're national companies. You can have a systematized um, list of materials um, that you use in all of your properties over and over. If one store is out of it, you can go to another store and get it. And it makes logistics super, super simple. But you guys can see here, you know, shingles are running 28 to $30 a box. Well, if I have 22 missing shingles, and that means I roughly have 22 square feet of missing shingles, because I think they're like, they sell in per square foot. You guys can see 25 yards or 33.3, you know, feet per bundle. And so you throw in some roofing nails, you throw in some shingles, you know, you're probably looking at, at the most, $60 in material. And to do something like that might take somebody four to five hours. And so I just adjusted the price here. 
down a little bit. Remember, we're trying to get within that $1,000 budget. And so I said, okay, realistically, you're $30 to $60 in material and four hours worth of labor. Garage window pane scrape. So this is one where I gave a lot because you guys can see here on the garage window, to scrape and paint this, again, you're going to get a quart of paint for like five to ten bucks and you're going to scrape it and you're going to paint it and it's going to take you like 30 minutes to an hour at the most. So you can see that the contractor is on the charge 83 bucks. I just said, hey, let's bring it down a little bit and say, and say 75. Now, if I were really doing the math, I would say, okay, say it takes you an hour and $10 in paint. Well, what's your labor? 30 to $50 an hour and add $10 on that. So that might be really like a 30 to $50 job. And same thing here. They, they just gave us a big quote for um, a couple projects, $430 total. And so I think to myself, okay, there's a dryer vent on the outside of the house that needs to be replaced. I don't know if that's showing here in the photos. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Um, yeah, it's not showing. Um, well, a dryer vent cover, well, let's just give you guys an example, right? Dryer vent cover. Dryer vent cover. This is how you figure it out. Some of you guys are like, yeah, this is a no-brainer, but a lot of people actually struggle with this. Dryer vent cover. Okay? Aluminum vent cover. Holy shit, I need to get in the dryer vent business. 75 bucks, right? I don't think that's accurate. Uh, couldn't imagine that thing costing 75 bucks. Um, let's try it again. Dryer vent. Outside dryer vent cover. That's what we're looking for. It's on the outside of the house. Couldn't imagine it costing 75 bucks. Um, here we go. Okay. There we go. Wide mount dual door wall vent. Round wall vent. Flush mount in white. Square exhaust siding vent. That's what we're talking about here. It's just the cover that needs to be replaced. So 19, 20 bucks, right? I don't know what that other thing was for 75. Huh. But that's why you guys got to do this, right? And it's as simple as just going there and, and figuring this stuff out. And so I say, okay, so you're probably, okay, dryer fence, 20 bucks, and then you got two GFIs and some wire in the kitchen. Well, what does a GFI cost? Same thing, right? GFI cost, GFI outlet. And you only have to do this once or twice before you get an idea of what everything cost. Right, electrical outlets, that's what we want, and receptacles. And then I update our pricing in our business for things every year because the prices change, materials change, labor change. So look, you know, uh, you're 17 bucks for a 20 amp GFI, and it might even be a pack. Sometimes these are a pack because GFIs are not that expensive. You can get them for a couple bucks. 15 amp cell test GFI, that one's 15 bucks. Right? 22 bucks, that one's got some, no, that's not a GFI. 21, okay, so call it 15 to 20 bucks. The GFI outlet, right? And then you got some wire that goes with that. That might be another 20 bucks. See, that's a four pack. Okay, but that's 55 bucks. So you, so you say to yourself, benefit of doubt, you're probably going to have about 75 bucks in material, and it's going to take you maybe five hours in labor to do something like that. So, you know, they were charging 430 I said, hey, let's do 325 Now, if you wanted to, you could say equals five times, you know, point thirty dollars or five times 30 that's your hourly rate, plus your materials would mean 225 Right? And that's, and that's what I would do normally. But I want to, you got to give some and you got to take some, right? And my budget was a thousand bucks. And so I'm a little bit over my budget. And then I, and then I always put a buffer on top of that. And usually it's a 10% buffer. You guys can see here, if you look at my formula in the top left corner, I did 975, which is the sum times 1.15, which means I'm adding 115% to it, 15% on top of it. I did that because if I do a 10% buffer, you know, I, I'm at 1,073, 
And I'm just trying to be fair here in this quote. I'm trying to make it the quote fair for everybody, for both the contractor and us. So I'm a little bit over and they're a little bit under. And so I added a 15% buffer on it. But usually I add a 10% buffer because, you know, things happen when you get involved in this. If I think it's going to take an hour, the other thing that I'll usually put in here is I'll even get more specific and I'll add a 10% on all this time, right? Because if I think it's going to take an hour, give it a benefit of the doubt, it might take 10% more on top of it. And then you've got the time back and forth to Home Depot and all that type of stuff. So I might have a line item in here if I'm going by hourly with this like I do on a big renovation quote. This is just a $1,000 repair quote. But on a big renovation quote, I'll add 10% buffers on all the times that I think it might take. And then um, I'll put in like an hour or a couple hours of drive time back and forth, right, at $50 an hour or whatever it is. So, you know, that's how you do it. This is a very simple, primitive example of how you work it down, and it's important to know your numbers. Um, you know, and when it comes to big renovation, it gets even more important. And so I'll show you guys a lot of times how you work through the renovation. You only have to do this once, save the Excel sheet, and then you know what things should cost. And so you ask yourself, let's take a renovation, for example. Let's say you're doing a bathroom. Okay, and we say, okay, so bathroom. Well, what are all the elements of a bathroom? Think to yourself. We have the tile, you know, floor tile. We have the wall tile. We have the toilet, sometimes. We have the tub, sometimes. Let's just say we're doing it all, right? We have the vanity. We have the mirror. And then we have, you know, the, um, the toiletry kits, like the toilet paper holder, the, you know, whatever, just put um, accessories, right? You know, um, the towel holder, all that type of stuff. And then you've got the actual, like, you know, when you do the floor tile, you're going to have to maybe do some underlayment or some thin set underneath that, so you, or the mortar underneath it. The same thing with the wall tile. Um, so you have some extra material that goes along with it. Um, toilet. Well, when you do a toilet, you're going to have some caulk around it. You're going to have the wax ring that holds the toilet in place. And so and, and for the sake of not turning this into an hour-long video, I'm not going to put those in there. You guys get the point. Um, you know, the tub, same thing. Well, when you install the tub, there's other things. There's plumbing that goes with it. Sometimes you've got to replace the plumbing or the shower diverters or the shower head, right? Shower head, that type of stuff. Um, shower diverters. Okay, and I can't spell, so don't blame me. You don't need to know how to spell to invest in real estate. Um, okay, so you guys get the point. So think to yourself, if you're doing a bathroom, what are all the things that are going to go into a bathroom? And if you're clueless at what the prices are, you break it down like this, and you say, okay, so material and then labor time. So how long would it take you to do a bathroom? And then you got to think about your teardown. So usually it'll take you a day, a full day, to tear out a bathroom. And so you say you would put eight hours here, right? And then what is your contractor's labor? Ask your contractor, what do you charge per hour for labor? Well, let's just split the difference. We pay contractors right now between $30 to $50 an hour for general labor. Usually somewhere between $30 and $40. $50 is really super high, and that's usually if they have somebody else with them. That's in Michigan. So then I say, okay, so let's just call it $35 an hour, you know, um, and I'll put a tab here, price per hour, 35.00. And that will come into play here later. But then I say, okay, floor tile. So go into a normal bathroom and measure your floor. How many square feet do you have, right? Well, if the space is three feet by four feet, equals 3 times 4, you have 12 square feet of floor tile. So then I'm going to go to Home Depot, and I'm going to physically walk around and find some tiles that I want, floor tile, right, and start to build a price list. And you only have to do this once, room by room, and this is how you get to be an expert at what it costs to renovate a house and what it costs to you know the materials and the labor so that you know what you're doing so that when you get a quote from a contractor for thirty thousand dollars and you did your math and you're being fair and reasonable you say okay break it down for me mister i've been in many situations with a contractor who said okay you want seven thousand dollars to do a bathroom 
help me understand that. Let's break it down together and I'll do exactly this. And I'll say, okay, here's the material. What do you charge for labor? Mr. or Mr. Contractor, isn't it reasonable that to do the floor and the tile, uh, to do the tile floor, it might take you, remember, it's already been demoed. We accounted for that down here. It might take you in a small bathroom like that, you know, maybe four hours to do the floor. Is that reasonable? Yes. Okay. Great. Mr. Mrs. Con Mr. or Mr. Contractor, if you're doing the wall tile, how long would it take you to do the wall tile? Four or five hours? Is that reasonable? Fantastic. How long would it take you to put a toilet in? An hour? Would you agree? Fantastic. How long would it take you to do a tub? Four to five hours? Fantastic. How long would it take you to put a vanity in? Three hours? Fantastic. How long would it take you to hang a mirror and put a mirror in? You know, an hour? And that's overkill, but whatever. You guys get the point. How long would it take you to hang all of the accessories, the towel holders and all that stuff? You know, maybe you spend an hour doing that. Fantastic. Put the shower head on. You know, um, 15 minutes, right? Shower diverters. Now, that's going to take some time. How long would that take you to put in the shower diverters? Um, you know, four hours. Great. Just so you guys know, when we do bathrooms, we plan for a day of demo in two to three days to actually put the bathroom together. So you could be looking at total three days at, at eight hours a day in labor. Let's see what this adds up to. We have a total here of 32 hours. Equals 8 times 3 is 24. Well, it would be 8 times 4 because we have a day of demo. It would be 32 hours. See how close we were there? Right? 32, 30. We're spot on. 32, 32, right? Day of demo, 3 days to put it all back together for a normal small bathroom. That's pretty reasonable. And so the, what I would say to myself is, you know, for labor, I would take, labor is good, so I would sum this out and I would say sum equals sum of all of this. We have 32 hours in labor. And then cost-wise, we would do equals that times your price per hour, times that. Oops, sorry. Equals that times that. So labor for a bathroom, I'm looking at 1100 bucks, right? Now floor tile, same thing. Go to Home Depot and look at what floor tiles you want, right? Floor tiles can range anywhere from a dollar to four or five dollars per square foot and then add another about 50 cents in. Show up at Home Depot and get the prices, right? Uh, uh, floor, flooring, let's just do flooring. I like to go to the store and get a price list once a year on things. But you can do it online. You know, and let's just say, I'm just making this super quick for you guys. Well, same thing with wall tile, right? Um, where the heck is the bathroom floor? Uh, carpet, tile flooring, yeah, sure. Por porcelain tile is a good one. We use that a lot, right? And so that's why it's better to be at the store and do this. But you can see 199 a square foot, 248 a square foot, 199 a square foot. You can get things on sale for a dollar a square foot. Right? But you're gonna usually hover somewhere around two dollars a square foot, and then anywhere between fifty to seventy-five cents per square foot for all the stuff that goes with it, like the underlayment, the the um, um, you know, mortar or whatever, right? And so I might put here, I know that I have a 3 by 4 square feet, measure it. So that's 12 square feet, so I'm going to put equals 1.99, so that's my price per square foot for the tile, plus my 0.50 cents for the, all the materials to install it. Um, and then... Uh, um, I'm sorry, times our square footage, times 12. No, that doesn't make sense. Hold on, give me one second. It's going to equal 1.99 plus 0.50. So you have 249 a square foot. So this equals 2.49 times your 12 square feet. So you're looking at a whopping 29.88 in material. Same thing with wall tile. You're probably going to you know, have the same gambit. Let's say your wall tile is 4 feet high on one wall 
by, um, let's call it five feet high by like five feet wide, right? So that's 25. And then the other wall, 25. And then the other wall is five feet by three feet, which is 15. Equals 25 plus 15. The wall behind it is the same thing, plus 15. So you've got 55 square feet of wall. At a dollar at the same price, let's just say you try to find the same quality tile, a dollar ninety-nine plus you know the um, you know plus the material to install it, fifty to seventy-five cents. So equals fifty-five square feet times two point forty-nine. Prices ran the gambit. You might get tile for your wall that is you know three dollars a square foot, right? You guys figure I like to be mid-grade stuff, not low quality not super high quality unless you're doing a luxury house or a high quality property that demands it most of our stuff is mid-grade type of stuff right so you can see this is the material same thing what's a toilet cost toilet toilet to toilets All right. same thing runs the gamut pick a nice toilet that you want Toilet might cost you 50 to 300 bucks. So here's a nice toilet, got good reviews. Here's another one, 159, fantastic. So 159, and you guys get the point. So you just keep looking it up. So I'm going to go through this quickly. You know, a tub, a tub could cost you 250 for a tub. A van, nice vanity might cost you 500. A mirror, 50 bucks. Accessory kit, 60 bucks. A shower head you know buy a real nice shower head let's just say you spend 150 bucks on it the shower diverters and all that stuff let's say you spend another 150 bucks on it and so our material again and this is just giving you a 10,000 foot overview is 1400 bucks so people say I tell people all the time we do full bathroom renovations in a thousand square foot house which is normal in Michigan for three thousand dollars all day long Yet, when I set new contractors down to do a bathroom, and if you call the contractor up, you say, hey, come redo my bathroom, they're probably going to quote you between $7,000 to $10,000 to do it. And so you take them through this exercise, and you say, break this down for me. Okay, so you're telling me that it's going to take you three to four days, it should take you three to four days to do it. We have $1,500 in material, and so the remaining $6,000 is labor. Next, pick another contractor right and so you can see equals sum you can you don't even need to do sum you just do equals the material plus the labor is twenty six hundred dollars to do a full bathroom and then you'd add a you know a ten percent buffer on that so you can go equals that times one point one zero hundred ten percent so twenty eight hundred dollars three thousand bucks that's how you break it down and then you move to the next room. Kitchen, break that down. Living room, what do you do in a living room? We're really flooring, paint, right? You know, uh, what do you do in a bedroom? Carpeting. You know, what do you do in the basement? Break it down. And you only have to do this once in your life as a fix and flip or a wholesaler. Save it on an Excel sheet, these numbers. And then you can reference it and say, ah, you can look back and say, this is what it should all cost. I figured it all out. And I do this once a year because labor is adjusting once a year and materials are adjusting once a year. And then you have a nice Excel sheet built out with what you can expect, right? And then what will happen is when you get done doing every single room, you'll probably come to the conclusion that that house is going to cost you twenty to $25,000 to renovate that entire house. To upgrade everything on a thousand square foot house here in Michigan California that's renovating the closet only right and then you can say to yourself ah so so to renovate this whole house cost me 25,000 when I add all these bedrooms up and it's a thousand square foot house so I do that I go equals that divided by that and I get oops sorry equals that divided by that and I get $25 per square foot. Then you start to get real simple for you. And you say to yourself, remember I tell you guys in our coaching and our training everything we do, to renovate a house here in Michigan is $20 to $25 a square foot. Well, that's how you get the math. 
and then you can just apply that. Then you don't even have to think anymore. You walk through a property and do a renovation, and um, you say, oh, well, this house needs a full upgrade. Every room, every bath, it's, it's, getting, the whole, it's getting the whole gambit. Well, how many square feet is it? 1,000 square foot? It's going to cost me $20, $25 square foot to renovate it. It's going to be a $20,000, $25,000 renovation. It takes you five seconds to figure it out. And you update your prices every single year. And so that's how you guys do it. So I just thought this was a great opportunity to share with you, you know, uh, real world uh, tips and tricks and how we do it. And um, hopefully that helps you. I'm going to go ahead and download this and put this in the course for all the um, ultimate real estate investing students as just additional learning material. And if you're not yet a student of the ultimate real estate investing course, check it out. Check out our free case study. Um, check out theuric.com the uric.com you guys can go there the uric.com the ultimate real estate investing course and get a free trial of the course and you know you can schedule i've got lots of great videos here the best path to get started in real estate what's a good deal analyzing your numbers a deal in 90 days what makes a good investment property tons of stuff um, and then you can get an inside look at the course the really most important thing is schedule this free strategy call with me. Schedule a free strategy call with me. I chat with you one-on-one. -on -one. I, I look at where you're at in your business. Where do you want to go? How can you get you there? I give you some real um, tips and tricks on that call. It's free. Um, and then if you guys are ready to get in started, you can apply for the course or get a free 72-hour trial. The course is growing. There's over 85 modules in it. Weekly group coaching with me. 90-day success plan. It's incredible thing. So um, hopefully that provided some value for you guys. Um, do this once a year. Know your numbers. Understand your numbers. It can be the difference between you getting a deal or not. If you think that your contractors are giving you a quote for $37,000 and it really should cost you $25,000 to get the property done, but you go off of the thirty-seven dollars you make an offer to the motivated seller based on the $37,000 renovation, you're going to get beat out all the time by guys like me who might know, know my numbers because I can offer that seller more money for their property because I have the right quote. And so I just beat you out of the gate by, what, $13,000 because you're getting whack quotes from contractors because you don't know your numbers, right? And so it makes a big difference. Know your numbers. Understand your numbers. If you want to master learning your numbers, you want to master real estate investing, then I strongly suggest you get involved in our Ultimate Real Estate Investing course, become a student of ours, get the weekly coaching with me. We're going to make you a master of this skill. Make it a great week. Talk to everybody soon.